40 years of Beverly Hills Cop, Eddie Murphy. When Eddie Murphy became the icon, man, this movie was something. Love it, dog. Scenes I love. It was any scene that he was trying to get into places. I think Chris Rock called it a brother that could get in the room without a key. So, like, all the spots he went in when he got to Beverly Hills, he got in the hotel for cheap. I'm here to do a exclusive interview on Michael Jackson. I was going to call the article, Michael Jackson sitting on top of the world. Now I was say Michael Jackson can sit on top of the world as long as they in the Beverly Palm Hotel because ain't no niggas allowed here. <laughs> <laughs> they just show that as the clip on the news. Like, Beverly Hills Cop is number one again. Here's a scene from it. He's like, them niggas loud here. I'm like, God damn. All right. <laughs> Remember the classes. I'm going there, man. I'm hitting up the 40 year thing, man. And 1984 was a good year, man, for movies. So I did the Karate Kid. The Karate Kid came out in 84. Purple Rain came out in 84. And this one came out in 84. I'm talking about Beverly Hills Cop. 40 years of Beverly Hills Cop. Eddie Murphy. When Eddie Murphy became the icon, man, this movie was something. Love it, dog. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't never seen it, man, buddy cop movie, uh, cop from Detroit. In Detroit, his friend comes to town, and he stole some stuff from some rich dude in Beverly Hills, and then they kill him. If you ain't see it, so fucking what? It's 40 years old. You ought to be shaming your damn self. You know, Eddie Murphy's friend get killed. Eddie Murphy's a cop. He said, he I'm going to Beverly Hills to find this guy. Comedy commenced when he got there. The background of this film, I think one of the producers say he was riding through Beverly Hills, and in a raggedy car and people were looking at him. He's like, well, if somebody came from uh, another town and was, had to come here and take care of something. And then he said something about a cop pulled him over and cop said something. And he's like, you know what? This would be a good idea for a film. And they wrote the film out and they wanted to make it, they wanted to make it kind of a comedy, but not really. So they had it for Sylvester Stallone. And Sylvester Stallone was like, man, I ain't doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? Let me let me rewrite the movie and blah, blah, blah. And so they had, uh, I think John Travolta was up for it. And they're like, no, Sylvester Stallone, let me get this. and. And he changed the he changed the whole damn movie. <laughs> like, man, what is this? This dude is gritty. Like, what the hell is this? He's like, yeah, his name would be Axel Cobretti. They're like, nah. And then the movie budget went up like double. He's like, man, nah, we ain't doing this. And Sylvester Stallone wound up doing that movie later called Cob Cobra. And I remember the post. He's like, you did disease and I'm the cure. And he shot <laughs> dude. He ate cold pieces with scissors. It was crazy. It had nothing to do with this movie, though. So they're like, you know what, man? Go to Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy was on a lot one day. Like, what y'all working on? We're going to stay called Belly Hills Cop. He's like, hey, man, I'll do it. You know what I'm saying? So just let me know when you're ready. He went to Eddie. Boom. Legend was made. Stars born. Right then and there, man. Characters in the movie you had Jenny Summers. You had my man Victor Maitland. You had Billy Rosewood. You had Sergeant Taggart. Sergeant Taggart. <laughs> you had Mikey, his friend. Um, Inspector Todd was there. Paul Reiser played. I forgot his name was Jeff. Favorite characters in the movie? Probably Inspector Todd. You know what I'm saying? He actually was a fucking real detective. You know what I mean? In Detroit. And you could tell that he couldn't act. But yo, he was a brother. He was the only brother in the cast other than Eddie. And I was like, yeah, that's what's up. Mean motherfucker, though. I was like, damn, can he be nice and shit? But he was mean. And he was funny, though. He was real funny and shit. <laughs> don't think, Axel. Don't think, Axel, make my dick itch. That's... <laughs> That was in part two. Inspector Todd and Damon Wayans is in. He playing the Banana Man, which I didn't know at first for years. And I was like, oh, shit, that is Damon Wayans. And the buffet plate is twelve fifty. <laughs> <laughs> but Eddie Murphy, you, you went to go see Eddie Murphy get down. And him as Axel Foley was incredible. Scenes I love. It was any scene that he was trying to get into places. I think Chris Rock called it a brother that could get in the room without a key. So like all the spots he went in when he got to Beverly Hills, he got in the hotel for cheap. I'm here to do a exclusive interview on Michael Jackson. I was gonna call the article, Michael Jackson sitting on top of the world. Now I was say Michael Jackson can sit on top of the world as long as they in the Beverly Palm Hotel, because ain't no niggas allowed here. <laughs> <laughs> they just show that as the clip on the news. Like, the Beverly Hills Cop is number one again. Here's a scene from it. He's like, them niggas loud here. I'm like, God damn. He went into uh, Victor Maitland's office, talking about a flower deliverer. Then later on, you saw him in a, the warehouse, the uh, buffet that morning. And he talking about he was gay, had herpes simplex T. And it was like, yo, Eddie just getting in all these damn places by bullshitting people. Incredible. The art gallery, my man, um, Ronson Pincho, my man that played Balky on Perfect Strangers. He was so there. Bob is it today. <laughs> well, act well, Foley, act well, act smell. Act well, Foley, here to see her. He's an old acquaintance. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> he was in the strip club, and uh, they found the dudes came with the trench coats. Um, they playing the Nasty Girls by Vanity Six. You know, I love me some vanity, man. And he did the OK sign as iconic. The shootouts like were real because it got real serious real quick when um Eddie was going to kidnap the lady and he had to go in and he broke in the backyard, which I was like, how do you not guard the backyard, which is weird. But anyway, 
He's um, breaking in and tagging, like, don't go on there, man. You want to stop me? Shoot me. And he put the eyes up, like, like see, like, he, I'm like, oh, Eddie can act a little bit. Had me scared for him. What was the worst part about the movie? It's only one thing. One thing about the film I like, and people are like, man, you too damn tedious, man. You too damn tedious, man. You know what it was? I ain't like the zit on Victor Malin's forehead. What the hell? The whole movie. Nobody busted this thing. Nobody busted the zit. They had CGI. They could have put a piece of green screen and blocked it off. Something like that zit was epic. And then you go see him on the Jerry Moe. He got the same zit. Like, what's the zit on your head? Well, man, just bust the damn thing. You in Beverly Hills. I know some doctors that could take care of that shit. Impact on the movie, Eddie Murphy became a legend. That movie was the number one comedy for like about seven, eight years until Home Alone knocked it out. I just saw this. Eddie Murphy, Whoopi Goldberg, Richard Pryor. They could be in movies and be the only black person in it and make it okay. Like, they were that likable. The soundtrack was amazing, too. So, Billy Hills Cop, remember the classics. Check it out, man. Next segment.